Hi, welcome. I'm Dr. Carla Sadek, and you're watching my channel on medical information. Now, I normally have this site dedicated to the removal of cysts and lipomas because that's what I specialize in. But given the corona COVID-19 pandemic, I've decided to dedicate my platform on providing medical information for free around this particular topic. And this video is all about pregnancy and the coronavirus. And this should be watched in conjunction with a couple of my other videos if you haven't seen on the coronavirus. So there's the, the coronavirus, how to wash hands, vulnerable individuals, and also a coronavirus special with Dr. Sara Sadek, a dentist, who will be talking about dental emergencies and how to get access to dental care in the midst of the coronavirus. Let's start. I've got a couple of questions that I've had uh, come in from viewers regarding pregnancy. So I've dedicated this entire video to pregnancy and coronavirus, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, now, all the information that I have in the channel is based on the medical information that's released to me here in the United Kingdom by Public Health England. So if you're in the United Kingdom, this will directly be relevant to you. If you're outside the United Kingdom, then may not be directly relevant, but certainly pertinent to the to wherever you are. Great, useful tool. I always find that a video explains a lot more than reading uh, pages and pages of text. So I'm hoping that this information that I'm giving will be able to, you take it away easy, sitting in your lounge, watching uh, YouTube, you'll be able to digest uh, as opposed to reading really complex medical terms. So I'll grab my laptop and let's begin. Let's look at the first question here. So what effect does the coronavirus have on pregnant women? So obviously that's a really uh, pertinent question and it's playing on the minds of a lot of uh, women who are pregnant, um, who recently got pregnant or considering to get pregnant. So at the moment, we don't have a huge amount of literature on coronavirus and the effect of pregnancy. What we do know is a number of things. Number one, it doesn't necessarily cause miscarriage. Number two, it doesn't cause cause preterm, but we'll talk about that in a little while. And number three, uh, we aren't convinced that there is a huge amount of evidence to show that there is a transmission between mother and child uh, in, in, in the womb. There are some cases coming out though that are indicating that there have been cases of that vertical transmission as we call it, that's from um, the mother to the baby. And we're understanding that more and more often, but there doesn't seem to be any adverse effects on the baby. Now that's of course important because we know that certain viruses can affect pregnancy. And that's why pregnant women are a lot more vulnerable when it comes to viruses. That's because of the physiological changes that your body undergoes in pregnancy. And more recently we had the Zika virus, which was causing a lot of um, you know, deformities of the head, some cephalic deformities. So there was obviously a lot of concern about what COVID-19 or coronavirus might have on an unborn child. But at the moment it's looking relatively safe, but nonetheless, pregnant women are considered vulnerable and there are certain subgroups of pregnant women, so that's those with cardiac um, anomalies, so congenital cardiac anomalies, those with suppressed immune system, uh, those are even more vulnerable and they would go under what we describe as shielding. So you've got um, social distancing to be put in uh, across the whole of society, but then there's a real small cohort of very, very, very um, vulnerable individuals who require shielding and that means confinement for 12 weeks with very, very limited access to the outside world. So we'll be covering that as well. So, that, so the question, I hope we've answered, what effect does the coronavirus have on pregnant women? Um, at the moment, we don't think it's going to affect pregnant women any more than it does the general population for that age group. We haven't found that pregnant women are more prone to the, you know, the, the lung, the respiratory issues like pneumonias that we see in, 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 in the elderly population. So we're not seeing that. So at the moment, you can develop the coronavirus, you can get ill, you get the mild, moderate symptoms, you get the, the continuous new cough, you get the temperature, the sweat, the flu-like symptoms, but we're hoping that it doesn't develop further into uh, something worse. Okay, so next question from the audience, we've got, uh, what effect will coronavirus have on my baby if I'm diagnosed with the infection? So we did touch on that briefly. Like we said, the evidence for vertical transmission, that's to say from mother to child, is proving to be very, very low, very, very low. We've only had like a couple of case reports indicating this. We also have found that there's no congenital abnormality passed on to the baby, okay? As we have seen in previous viruses like Zika. So that's important to note. 
We've also found that the, you know, there have been cases where mums have had the coronavirus, they've been symptomatic, and they subsequently gone on to have a preterm birth. That's to say that the baby came out before the 40, 30, 48 week um, you know, cooking period, gestation period, but we don't think that's necessarily related to the coronavirus. But the take home message is it's still a very early um, virus, still a very early disease. We don't fully understand it, um, but we are in the United Kingdom. We've got what we call a real time surveillance at so any mother, any mother going into um, a labor ward with um, corona symptoms they're put on a database and we're monitoring them and that information is being released almost weekly basis from um, you know authorities such as the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Midwifery. So let's take on the next question. So what can I do to reduce my risk of catching the coronavirus? So, the, so in terms of pregnant women I think the advice is much the same as the general population. Number one, you've got to wash your hands. If you haven't seen my video on how to wash your hands properly, go and watch it and then come back or go watch it after this. And the technique is really to kind of wash your hands properly, you know, 20 minutes, 20 seconds, wash it regularly. Every time you go out, every time you come back into the house, you know, some say maybe wash it every two to three hours, especially if you're in the, in the high risk category. So number one, washing. Number two, you know, if you've got a cough, you've got a sneeze, you gotta catch it into a tissue, you gotta bin it, you gotta wash your hands, okay? And number three goes without saying that if you are um, exposed to anybody with the corona symptoms, then you must distance yourself from them. So social distancing from anybody with the virus. Now we know that a lot of people with the virus are asymptomatic. That's to say they don't have any symptoms and they kind of just go around they're not aware that they've got the virus, yet they're still able to spread it. They're still able to be infectious. So for pregnant women, special precautions. So avoid public transport where possible. Reduce um, non-essential travel. So really, you should be only going to your doctors, um, checking on, uh, on groceries, you know, restricting um, you know, the, the reasons you have to go outside the house, you know, exercise, your appointments, absolutely. Um, what else good advice can we give? Um, where possible, you should be working from home. Um, here in the United Kingdom, we've closed bars, cafes, restaurants, cinemas, this kind of stuff. Anything that would result in loads and loads of people gathering together, all those functions have been closed. So you shouldn't be um, exposed to those as well. Also, you might be wondering about your antenatal appointments. Now, because we don't want pregnant women being exposed to multiple trips, you know, going out to see a midwife at 10 weeks, going out again for bloods at 12 weeks, again at 21 weeks, and so forth and so forth. Here in the United Kingdom, what we're doing is what we call a one-stop shop. So we're kind of compressing a lot of all of these activities. And so if you go for your scan, you'll probably get your bloods done, your urine check, your blood pressure check, your suprapubic fundal height, that's to measure the bump. They'll be doing all of that in the scanning room. So you'll have people who are gonna do that. You're gonna have less exposure, so you'll have less people and you will have less reasons to go out into the hospital where you may be um, subjected to the virus. We're also going to be doing a lot of telemedicine. Now, telemedicine is a new concept. Uh, it's really kind of introduced with the invention of the smartphone, people downloading apps, uh, and we're able to do video conferencing on your phone, on your laptop as well as having telephone consultations. So a lot of your antenatal appointments, of which you should be having at least six in low-risk pregnancy, maybe more if you're high-risk pregnancy, a lot of those will be done remotely over a telephone or over a, uh, a you know, voice over internet protocol, a, a Skype, something of that nature. So expect to have a number of remote communications <clears throat> and not all face-to-face. -face. And when you do have face-to-face, -face, they'll be doing a lot of different services in that one appointment. So it won't be just a scan, it'll be a urine dip to check for protein. It'll be your blood pressure to make sure it hasn't shot through the roof, make sure that baby's growing well, <clears throat> okay? All right, next question. What do I need to do now? You know, pregnant women are now classed as vulnerable. Uh, and the reason for that is because we know that your body changes in pregnancy and it becomes more susceptible to viruses. You know, the Parvo virus, Zika virus, all of these viruses can affect pregnancy. It's only because of the physiological change. And, you know, even when you go for your booking bloods, we check for rubella immunity and all this kind of stuff. And there's whooping cough vaccinations. So we know that in pregnancy, viruses really like to get in there and, and cause havoc. But at the moment, coronavirus is indicating that it's not doing too much havoc, 
But again, there's a lot of unknown unknowns. So as a global um, population in the United Kingdom, if you're pregnant, you're classed as, as, as like a vulnerable group, even more so if you've got underlying medical conditions such as congenital heart disease, or you're on an immunosuppressant, or you're asthmatic taking high dose steroids. So all these things can impact your vulnerable state. So bear that in mind, speak to your midwife, your local physician, for more information about vulnerability status. If you're in the United Kingdom, your GP will have, if not will do soon, be sending out letters informing you of your vulnerable status and all the things that you need to do as well. Okay, so I hope that's answered that question. Uh, that was from Barbara. Next question, should I attend my antenatal and postnatal appointments? Absolutely, absolutely. Really important to be going to your antenatal appointments. Um, these are, you know, these clinics have been honed with years and years of experience, years and years of medical evidence. And it's through those that we've managed to make giving birth so low risk in the developed world compared to the undeveloped world. So it's still really important that you check in with your midwife, you have your regular contacts. Like I said, those appointments may not be the traditional face-to-face -face or the community visits going to community center. A lot of them will be over the internet. A lot of them will be over the phone. Um, so expect that kind of change. And as I mentioned, the one-stop shop as well. Let's have a look. What's the next question? What is the advice for travel if I'm pregnant? So again, um, if you're going to be traveling abroad, I think that's highly unlikely given the fact that most countries have closed their borders but I would recommend checking with the, uh, with the website for the Foreign Commonwealth Office um, if you are venturing that far abroad. But again, unnecessary travel is you know, non, not recommended. Will my birth choices be affected by the coronavirus? Hmm. So that's a good question. We wanna make sure that, you know, your midwife is gonna try and make sure that your pregnancy and your birth is as special as it can be. They will try and facilitate it. There may be restrictions based on unit to unit, Discuss that ahead of time with your midwife. Make sure you have a birth plan, describing your wishes. Discuss it with a midwife, your obstetrician, as and when that's needed. So again, there may be some local variation as to how much resources are available for you to go and deliver at home, um, how many are able to deliver in, in a water bath, and so forth and so forth. So there will be some restrictions as to the breadth of options you have for giving birth, but you know, I'm sure they will try and make this as very special occasion as it has always been for, or for women giving birth. So next question, what should I do if I think I've got the coronavirus? So the symptoms for the coronavirus, as we've, uh, we've mentioned before, is there's a new high temperature or a new continuous cough. And if you're getting no symptoms, you call 111, call your local physician. It's really isolation for seven days. If you're in a household and you have no symptoms, then it's isolation for 12 days. Um, so you gotta, you gotta take those into consideration. Look out for symptoms affecting your breathing, um, chest tightness, look for any chest pain, any uh, shortness of breath on exertion, shortness of breath when speaking. So those are the signs that things may be you know, worsening and you should contact uh, medical help as quickly as you can. So how will I be tested for coronavirus? Um, so currently, most of the tests available are like a nasal swab test. Um, and so if you, if you have it at that moment in time, then it'll test positive. If you don't have it, then it'll test negative. But again, there are some error rates with that. And that's not to say that there may be errors with um, the results you receive. So there's something called a false positive. So you, it comes saying that you've got the virus, but in fact you haven't. And there's also an error rate called the false negative. That's to say that it came back saying you didn't have the virus, but in fact you do. Um, there are more tests in the pipeline. The one I'm particularly interested in are the antibody tests. So at the moment, it looks like a small little dish where you put a, a drop of blood and it tells you whether you've got antibodies or not, very much like a urine pregnancy test. It tells you whether or not the test is positive. Again, very crude. It just tells you whether or not you've got some antibody. That means an immunity to the coronavirus, but it doesn't tell you uh, how much immunity. And that's really important because we know that the viral load that you're exposed to will have an, uh, an adverse impact on your, on your ability to fight that virus. Next question, uh, can I still attend my antenatal appointment if in, I'm in isolation? Um, so I think, again, contact your midwife, but you tend to have to wait, ride out your isolation period, and that might delay your antenatal appointment until you are recovered. So yeah, 
Okay, next question. What happens if I fall into labor while I've got the coronavirus? Again, you'll have to call your, your maternity unit. They have been given advice on how to deal with this. Again, the usual advice uh, remains, and that means they try and keep you in early labor at home, and then once you're ready, they'll arrange uh, alternative um, um, delivery methods for you perhaps to come into the practice. But again, speak to your midwife and let them know. So I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, question and answer session helpful. If you've got any questions about maternity care and pregnancy and the coronavirus, then please let me know. If you want information on dental care, go check out Dr. Sarah's Perfect Smiles channel. Um, my next channel, my next uh, channel video will be on asthmatics and the coronavirus. So if you're asthmatic or your child is asthmatic, I'm going to be answering all your questions about asthma and uh, the COVID-19. So if you haven't done so already, remember to subscribe, press the alert button so that you receive my medical updates. Um, please comment down below because I'd like to hear what everybody has to say. But until next time, stay safe, take care, bye-bye.